Hi everyone, this is Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. Thanks for joining us on this special webinar where we're gonna be talking about pet cancer and all the things that we can do to help prevent it, but also how we can treat it if our dog or our cat develops cancer at some point in their life. So this is natural remedies to prevent cancer in pets. Let's get started. So some of the common cancers in our dogs and cats include lymphosarcoma, so lymphoma, hemangiosarcoma, osteosarcoma, mast cell tumors, and transitional cell carcinoma. Hemangiosarcomas, this is a really common cancer. Um, this is a cancer that invades the blood vessels and can be found anywhere. So it's often very vascular because it's invading blood vessels. So it can be filled with blood and it can be very serious and even deadly if that tumor ruptures. Very common breeds that we see it, golden retrievers, Labradors, German Shepherds, Boxers, English Setters, Doberman Pinschers. The main types that we see are what we call visceral, HSA, so hemangiosarcoma for short. This affects the spleen and heart, their heart base. So if we see a mass on the spleen, we, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a chance that it's too, we go by a third, a third, a third. So benign, aggressive, nothing to worry about. However, when we see a hemangiosarcoma and we diagnose it, there's huge concerns that there's also gonna be a heart-based tumor. That's a hemangiosarcoma. So that's where doing those ultrasounds is very important. This is usually diagnosed on emergency because the tumor is ruptured and your pet's fainted or very lethargic, not wanting to move, the gums are pale. So this, we diagnose it because we do an emergency surgery. We remove the bleeding spleen with the mass on it and send it in and get a diagnosis that way. Some of the symptoms you might see if your pet has developed hemangiosarcoma, they can get it under the skin. Uh, they might get tired really easily. You might notice bleeding, so like nosebleeds, pale gums, especially if they're having a bleed into their abdomen. Uh, you're gonna notice those gums go really white because they're losing blood. Sudden unexplained weakness. If they don't wanna get up, they're not wanting to move, take them into the ER immediately. Their belly might expand and swell because they are losing blood and the blood is going into the abdomen. They might have breathing difficulties, especially if they have a heart-based tumor. And then depression, you can even see seizures that happen from this. They might collapse. There could be abnormal heart rhythms too, especially if we're dealing with a heart-based hemangiosarcoma. And as mentioned before, for a definitive diagnosis to truly know what this is, because there's a lot of spleen masses that are benign, we need to do a biopsy. Typically what we do is we surgically remove the spleen and we send it in for histopathology. Dogs don't need a spleen. They can live just fine without it. Obviously, if you don't wanna remove organs if you don't need to, um, but this is highly beneficial. Remember, it's very vascular and so they bleed very easily. X-rays of the chest, so we're looking for metastasis, so other spread of the cancer cells into the chest. We're also looking to see if the heart looks normal. We can always do ultrasounds also, and then we're looking at doing blood work also. But blood work can be completely normal with any cancer. It always amazes me. My own pets were this. My first cat was, we diagnosed him and he ended up passing away within two weeks. His cancer was very aggressive, very aggressive. His blood work was completely normal, makes no sense. So whenever I see a really sick pet with an unexplained disease and blood work is normal, I get really worried about cancer. What are some of the treatments that we can use? So surgery, of course, we need to remove that bleeding spleen, but it doesn't cure the pet. So there can't, there's usually other cancer cells, there's that imbalance that has led to the cancer. Uh, chemotherapy is a big one that we utilize. And we there's newer research out there that the beta blockers, so a drug like propanolol, can actually aid certain chemotherapy drugs to make them more beneficial and helpful for putting that pet into remission. Radiation, potentially. Then, of course, our herbal therapies, our diet, so whole food diet, very important. And then what supplements are we using? So a lot of these supplements are gonna be the same. So making sure omega-3s, we can use curcumin, um, your medicinal mushrooms are very important. So Union Bayout 
is a very popular Chinese herb and a lot of conventional vets use it, which I always find very interesting, even if they don't agree with the rest of it, but they're using a Chinese medicine. Anyways, the Union Beiyao, it's a Chinese herbal medicine that helps to stop bleeding and it has anti-cancer properties. You want to make sure though that you're using this with the guidance of a holistic veterinarian. It's not just give this and keep giving this and good luck. You want to make sure you're balancing it with other herbs that are going to aid it and make it work as best as it can. So that's where you need a holistic vet, integrative veterinarian that's trained in that area to assess your pet as an individual and determine what herbs are going to be best. Turkey tail mushrooms, so your Coriolis. This is very, very important. This has had a lot of studies to showcase that remission times can be extended with adding in this mushroom. Of course, your Chinese herbal medicines to go along with Union Beiyao. Vitamin C, so vitamin C levels, using high doses of IV vitamin C, working with someone that knows what they're doing, of course, can help with a lot of these cancers. So finding a veterinarian that does that is very important. And then these dogs, they tend to be low in vitamin D3. You need to make sure though that they're truly low so that we're not creating a toxicity by just supplementing vitamin D3. So there's blood tests that you can check for and then you can supplement based on where your pet is at. The key points for cancer holistic therapy, diet, diet, diet. I'm gonna hammer that home. Food is medicine. Food is the foundation for health. When we don't feed our bodies the right things, we get disease and we get cancer. So we can get that anyways, even doing everything right, but we can prevent it even more with the right diets. So what have you been feeding to your dogs or your cats? Does it support them? And what can we change so it's easy to implement? Maybe it's adding in those leafy greens and those yellow orange veggies three times a week to help reduce that cancer risk. Herbal medicine, find a holistic or integrative veterinarian to partner with. Check out the ahbma.org website. So that's the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association. Look for a doctor that's near you that you can partner with to make sure that we're getting the best results, especially if your pet has cancer. If your pet doesn't have cancer, work with one of these doctors to keep them that way through prevention. Remember, prevention is better than cure. And we use Chinese, or I use Chinese herbal medicine all the time. It's key to integrating with ca cancer treatment protocols, using four marvels or Shea Mason for lymphoma or transitional cell patients if it's suited for them. Remember, it's individualized medicine. And then what supplements are we adding in addition to complement the food and the nutrition that they're on? Remember, we're complementing the diet. We're not just putting them on every single supplement that we find on Google. So medicinal mushrooms, milk thistle support detoxifying pathways to support the liver, especially if they're going through chemotherapy or on prednisone, omega-3s, CoQ10. What are the easy ones you can start right now? Is your pet on an omega-3? If not, let's get them on Nordic Naturals, omega-3 fatty acids, great starting point add those vegetables into the diet. Start with small things that are easy to implement that you can do that create the ability to do it over time because that's what matters. We can control so much, we can't control everything. So remember that we can't control everything, but there's a lot we can. So yes, our environments are becoming more toxic. The way foods are farmed, and processed are becoming more toxic, but we can do the things, we can grow our vegetables, we can make sure we don't put pesticides, herbicides on our lawns, we can make sure we use clean, safe cleaning products. What are the things that are going on your bodies that your pets are gonna come into contact with? It's gonna not only help your pet's health, but it's gonna help your health. So less cancer in both us and our pets long-term is, is ideal. And if you're not already in our pet membership, make sure you take advantage of it. We do have at this time of this webinar recording, a two week free trial. So check out our natural pet tribe where all these videos go. We have monthly videos where you can ask us questions. So live questions with the doc, me, and you can go back and watch the videos anytime. You also become a part of our members forum. 
make sure if you're not already doing it, subscribe to our weekly newsletter for free tips on how to help your pets thrive naturally. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Check out the natural pet doctor, Dr. Katie Woodley. We have lots of free, amazing content that you can learn so much from on how to keep your pets healthy. And check out our website, thenaturalpetdoctor.com. Thank you so much for checking us out, being a part of this webinar, taking control of your pet's health to help them thrive and live a vibrant life for many, many years to come. Thank you so much.